Hello, Sergeant Slick, back in the studio here in Melbourne, Australia. Today, walking you through my current single, Running Up That Hill, um, a track that I think probably everyone on the planet knows now, thanks to obviously Stranger Things, first of all, and then Kate Bush's original uh, topping the Spotify chart in pretty much uh, all over the world too. Uh, and when I saw that, I had, actually I hadn't watched Stranger Things. I just saw the, the track moving up the Spotify charts because I've watched them pretty much every day. Uh, and then I did my research and found out why. And I just thought one uh, Saturday afternoon, I'd throw together a, a quick edit, a, a recut, as I call them, uh, to play out that night. Uh, it ended up going over extremely well. I handed it out to some friends, some other DJs, and... Um, before too long, I had uh, a few labels actually contacting me, um, asking me if I would be keen on on releasing a, an official cover version. Uh, I signed the record with the guys at Tomorrow Music in Sydney, and they uh, did an amazing job in helping me to recreate all the music, um, source the performers for the music and the samples, uh, and the vocal, obviously. And uh, here's what we ended up with. So I'm going to do what I usually do in these uh, walkthroughs. I'm going to mute everything out and then just introduce the sounds one by one, tell a little bit of uh, a story about uh, what they're doing in the track and how they're helping and, and why they're there. So uh, let's get stuck into that. So we're in the session and the first, well, the first sound I always look for is the kick drum. And I think a lot of producers will tell you the same thing. The kick is the most important sound in the track, bar none. It's what drives it along. It's got to be punchy. It's got to be solid. It's got to be, uh, it's got to work on uh, all the different sound systems that this track was hopefully going to be played on. Uh, and this is the one I chose. I've used this kick drum before and I know it works and I know it's short enough that it leaves space for all the other sounds that I'm going to fill in that drum groove with as I progress in the track. So on top of that, we've got this uh, very simple kick, snare, loop. But that snare is really wide and really punchy and just accentuates the second beat every time it gets played. Another little drum loop there, which is pretty simple, nothing special, but again, just adding another layer of what we already have, making it a little bit more punchy as we go along. Next, an open hi-hat, and that's a classic TR-909 Roland drum machine hi-hat. It's been used in house music since the 80s, and there's something about it. It's just hardwired into our minds, I think, to, uh, to react to this hi-hat, uh, because it's been used so often that uh, if you've been on a dance floor in the last 20 years, you've probably heard it thousands and thousands of times in different tracks. It works. And so does this one, another classic Roland drum machine sound, the TR-808 hi-hat. It's one that I use in every single production that I, that I work on. Uh, if I don't use it, I find myself just listening out for it and, and uh, I just feel like something's missing. So it just gives that nice sizzle on the top end. It's, it's a really high quality sound for such a, a, an old uh, classic analog drum machine, but it just works. Another little hi-hat loop there, closed hi-hat on top, just another layer, building those drums up, getting the energy pumping. And that's another 808 sound. It's the closed hi-hat, just playing a 16th pattern, slightly loosely quantized just to give that left to right flow so it's not just like a machine banging out those drums mechanically. There's one more hi-hat, which has a bit more kind of mid energy just to really push things along there. And the last sound there is the 909 rides, which is another classic sound that I use often. Often it's just tucked down low in the mix, but I just find if your drums are lacking that little bit of energy and push, I always find that if you throw this 909 ride 
underneath um, on the same pattern as the hi-hat, it just, the energy level just comes straight up. So that's why I use it a lot. So that's the drums, pretty simple, nothing to loose or off the beat because I know that down the track, the drums that I have for the running up that hill sample have a real roll to them and I don't want anything getting in the way of that. So let's close off those drums and mute them out and open up the sample replay. Um, gonna say a big thank you to Luke Million who delivered this replay in record time and amazingly accurate. I was kind of almost blown off my seat when I heard this. So, <laughs> And uh, I'm sure you'll agree when you hear what Luke came back with. So here's the drums for running up that hill, the sample replay that Luke sent back. Beautiful. He's got all the analog uh, synths and classic drum machines in his studio. If you've seen his YouTube, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and he knows how to use them. So <laughs> here's the chords are coming over the top. And there's a real a held sound, this held sound that just goes through the whole track. I don't know what synth that is, but... <laughs> I love it. There's the uh, iconic sound from uh, the Cape Bush original. Perfectly recreated again. Look at all those layers. Let's hear that in isolation. Nailed it. We'll add the bass. And then we'll throw my drums back on top. Uh, there's also some guitars up here. Let's give a listen to those. Very nice. Um, and so on top of those samples, I just added a few layers, my own sounds as well, just to, uh, I don't know, fill it out a bit. It's, it is a song from the 80s, so it's very kind of, not underproduced, but um, not as dynamic really as the music's getting released today. So I just wanted to add a few more modern sounds underneath. So there's that one. Um, a little arpeggio that I put in my breakdown. Played on the ReFX Nexus synth. There we go, Art Transform. And there's this other synth, which I called Strange Synth. You'll see why. Now in the track. Let's get all my effects in there. I have my usual seven or eight channels that just rises, clap fills, laser beams, crash cymbals, everything that just gels the song together, uh, helps with the transitions and, you know, atmospheric parts of the track. Let's bring those in. So the last thing was the vocal, obviously. Well, the most important thing I would say uh, for this track, especially, um, 
we reached out to Amanda Watson, who is in a band called Cloud Busting. They're a tribute, a Kate Bush tribute act in the UK. And Amanda delivered this vocal, which again, I was blown away when I heard it. And uh, she sent down like four or five different takes of the vocal. And I kind of layered them, as you can see on the screen down here. Um, moved them out to the left and the right in the stereo field. So we had a nice fat wide vocal which really pushes through on the track and uh it sounds like this it doesn't hurt me do you want to feel her feels do you want to know know that it doesn't hurt me another thing i like to do um which i've done a lot over the years is use vocoders so i grabbed one of her um one of her vocal passes and ran it through a vocoder to layer underneath. And that sounds like this. It's not super loud in the mix. It's one of those things you really only notice it when, when you take it away, but it gives that kind of robotic kind of feeling underneath the vocal, which, um, you know, given the music you hear in Stranger Things, it's got that real 80s kind of influence. So I've just felt like it really fitted in with this track. So here is uh, the full vocal, including the backing uh, with the vocoder added as well. Try again. So that's pretty much everything in the track. I think um, I just unfold it and just have a little bit of a play through. I love this sound. <laughs> I can't stop listening to it. There we go. So, uh, yep, running up that hill. It's out now. Hope you enjoyed my walkthrough. If anyone has any questions, as usual, feel free to drop a comment or you can message me on Instagram, um, Facebook, anywhere you like. Um, it's out now, Tomorrow Music. I just did a Melbourne recut of this one as well, which just dropped for DJs. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Side and Slick, out. <laughs>